Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daisy. For today's video, I will be reading my subscribers' spooky stories. Spooky stories that they sent to me to share with all of you guys. So grab your snacks, grab your kobika, get yourself comfy, and let's get straight into it. Hi Daisy. I wanted to share a scary story of mine with you that still haunts me to this day. I am Afghan, born Muslim, so we believe in other entities that live among us. My story starts when I was 17 years old, hanging around at night with my friends, walking home all alone, and passing by some parks and abandoned streets in order to get home. One time, my parents left me home alone to go buy some groceries. I was laying down and chatting on my phone when I started to feel warmth behind me and a soft voice telling me, listen to me. I stopped for a second and focused to be sure I was not being delusional when once again, I heard that same voice right in my ear with warmth. I immediately jumped off my bed and went downstairs. As I opened the door, my parents had just come back with groceries and were watching me freak out. I told them there was someone in my room. My mother came and saw nothing and couldn't understand what was going on. She told me to not pay any attention and perhaps it was just in my head. Not long after that, I was home alone again, watching TV. Suddenly, I heard my sister calling out my name from her room three times. I didn't respond. Instead, I went to check if our car had arrived and if everybody was home. Nobody had arrived yet. I was indeed alone. Seconds later, I heard my mother's voice calling out my name from downstairs and I started to panic. I just kept quiet and didn't leave my room. And after a while, my family finally arrived. I told my mother that something was seriously not okay. She told me to recite the Quran and not to pay too much attention to it. From that day on, they never left me alone at home. After a while, I started to see a very attractive, nice man in my dreams. He was always fighting for me, accompanying me, and telling me nice things. I always dreamt of him. I couldn't help it, but I fell in love with that man. I was always thinking about him. Sometimes, I had lucid dreams where I was having intimacy with him, but it also felt so real. Like I would wake up and I would feel someone's presence and warmth over me, feeling the love. I sometimes would wake up at night and talk to someone in front of me, telling him how my day went and so on, and then fall back asleep. But at the time, I didn't pay attention to that because I didn't know such things could happen. For three years, I had been unlucky in dating. Every man I met would stop talking to me after a week. I felt so helpless and didn't know what was going on. One time, my aunt brought someone to her house for spiritual cleansing and I happened to be there. This lady sat in front of me, and despite not telling her anything, she could pinpoint where I felt physical pain at the moment. So we started to chat, and she would always look behind me for some reason, as if there was someone standing there. Hours passed, and she was in the kitchen chatting with my aunties. One of my aunties came out of the kitchen looking sad and asked me to come. I went and asked what was wrong. She asked me if I sometimes could feel if there was someone with me. I said yes and broke down into tears because it confirmed the doubt I had. They tried to calm me down and reassured me that the lady was going to cleanse me. I started talking to the lady, asking for more information. She said, You have been unlucky with dating since he entered your life. One night, you were walking home alone and he saw you and fell in love. So... He accompanied you to your home and stayed with you since then. He is a Jewish man, the same age as your father, 40 years old. He is always with you, watching over you, having intimacy with you. These days, you have been depressed and anxious because he is angry with you. 
I asked why, and she told me, because you were talking to other men, and he couldn't stand it. As the lady was telling me all of this, out of nowhere, she shook her head and started to talk in the same man's voice I've always heard. Her face changed a little bit, and she got the same dark spot on her chin as that man. He was communicating with me through her. He was really angry and was telling me that he wouldn't leave me. He stared at me for a long time. I was shocked and scared that I couldn't move. Then, he looked angrily at my aunt and my cousin and left her body. I told the lady I want him out of my life because he was scaring me. I started to feel dizzy and couldn't breathe. I felt someone's hands on my neck. He was choking me. I could feel that I was slowly dying. The lady immediately grabbed my hands and started to recite something. After a while, everything became normal. We sat down in the kitchen and she took salt in her hands and rubbed it on mine while reciting. After 15, 20 minutes, he once again entered her and told me he would leave but would try to come back. She took her hands off and poured the remaining salt outside the window. I was so traumatized that I slept at my cousin's house for a week. My mother knew nothing about all of this. The first night at my cousin's house, I dreamt of him, and it felt very real. He was looking at me and telling me that he would never leave me, but the rest of the nights were normal. After about a week, I finally thought everything was over and went back home. The first night after cleansing, in my room, I tended to wake up every time and look around me, as if I felt there was still someone looking at me. I tried to avoid it and just continued to sleep. But it happened two more times, and the last time I woke up, I was talking to the photo of my niece, as if I was having a conversation with it. At that moment, I knew I had to go back to the lady. So, I saw her again and told her I could sense something was wrong without mentioning the conversation with the photo. She closed her eyes and focused for a while and then told me, on your desk next to your bed, there is a picture of your niece. He is stuck in that picture. You have to break it and throw it away. I went pale. I then told her that two days ago, I woke up and was having a conversation with that same photo. She wasn't shocked. She already sensed it. I went home afterward and threw the photo in the public garbage. From then on, I didn't sense anything but relief. I thought everything was over until I started seeing random people in my room for the past two years. They are other entities. I don't know where they come from or why. Some of them look like normal humans, while others look really scary. At the beginning, it was scary. But now, I'm so used to seeing them and sensing them. I even feel when they touch me or when they're near me. I explained everything to my mother and she was very upset. She believed me and said that I may have a gift, but that I should not focus too much on it. I always recite the Quran and it has helped. My name is Caroline, and I like to share my personal experiences with the paranormal. These events occurred in the early 2000s, when rent was considerably cheaper. My grandparents had just moved into their first house in the US after relocating from Mexico. The house was pretty small, with two bedrooms, and it definitely had a creepy old house vibe. Despite this, the rent was about $400 at the time, so my grandparents decided to rent the house. They, along with my mom and me, lived in the house. Prior to moving in, my grandparents were unaware of the true horror that had occurred there. I was about four years old at the time, but I remember experiencing many strange occurrences around the house, such as dried blood on the walls, cold spots, and sightings of shadow people. My family also noticed these things, but this was not all that they experienced. At the time, I was too young to fully understand that we were living in a haunted house. 
However, as I grew older, my mom and my grandparents started to tell me about their paranormal experiences in that house. My mom recounted experiencing sleep paralysis some nights, feeling and seeing a shadow on top of her while not being able to move. As for my grandparents, they often saw the silhouette of a woman pacing through the house. There was one particular encounter my grandpa had shared with me. One early morning, upon returning home while everyone else was asleep, he came face to face with this shadow woman. The house lights were off, but he could see a woman's silhouette moving and thought it was my grandmother going to the bathroom. He called out to her, but received no answer. He observed her entering the restroom, and as he approached their bedroom, he realized that my grandmother was in bed, fast asleep. He went to the restroom and found no one there. He got into bed and stayed up for the rest of the night, fearing that he had just seen a woman who wasn't real. There had been more of these types of encounters that both of my grandparents had experienced at random times. But as the time went on living in that house, my grandpa became closer with our neighbor. They would hang out sometimes, drink some beers together after work, and talk about random things. One day, my grandpa was telling our neighbor about some of the things that were happening around the house. Instantly, our neighbor's face turned serious and pale. I told my grandpa that before we moved in, there was a couple that used to live in the house. The woman was beaten to death inside the house by her boyfriend before he took his own life. My grandpa was shocked by this information because the owner of the house did not tell my grandparents about this situation prior to them moving in. Once my family found out the truth, everything started to make sense. The dried blood stains on the walls and the apparitions of the lady. My grandparents were no longer comfortable living in the house and decided to move. It has been many years since we left the house, but it still stands and other people have lived there. Now that I'm older, I'm curious if they have experienced anything paranormal. Even though we don't live there anymore, we sometimes pass by the house as it's close to my grandparents' current home. And every time we pass by, it doesn't bring back good memories. Hi Daisy, my name is Erica. A couple of months ago, something strange started happening to my husband and me. We were in the living room watching TV when I swore I saw a black shadow go from the dining room to the kitchen. I quickly asked my husband if he saw it, but he said no. I ignored it and just continued to watch TV. A couple of days later, I was in our bedroom about to go to sleep when I saw a figure near our bedroom door. At first, I thought it was my husband getting ready to come to bed. I said, are you coming or what? When I didn't hear anything. I immediately turned on my flashlight and saw no one in the room. Quickly, I turned the lights on and called my husband, asking if he was downstairs. He told me he wasn't, and I freaked out. I told him what happened, and my husband was pretty freaked out too, but we decided not to give it any attention. As time went on, more things started to happen, but for whatever reason, it seemed to happen to me more than my husband. Our laundry room started to open on its own, and I would hear footsteps. I constantly felt like I was being watched. I talked to my parents about it and they told me to pray and to tell whatever was in our home to leave and not come back. I did that and thought it worked, but I was wrong. My husband told me that he started to see the dark shadow that I had been seeing. My husband and I decided to ignore it once again and act like we saw nothing, but that made things worse. While I was in the shower, I had this really weird feeling like I was being watched. I opened the shower curtain and there was no one there. I continued to shower, but the feeling of being watched got worse. Then I heard a really loud noise. It sounded like someone punched the sink. 
I immediately ran out of the shower, got dressed as fast as I could, and went upstairs. I turned on every light until my husband got back from work. I told him what happened, and he was pretty scared and freaked out. We decided to get the house cleansed by my sister, who does spiritual cleansings, as well as other spiritual practices. When my sister got to our house, she told me that she felt this strong and evil presence coming from downstairs. She said she would start with our bedroom and work her way to the upstairs. Once my sister was done cleansing our bedroom, she said that our bedroom door started to close on its own and she felt like something was in front of her as if it was not letting her come out. We continued to pray and again told whatever was there to leave in the name of Jesus. Since we did that, things seemed to calm down a bit. However, we still see things and the door to the laundry room still opens on its own occasionally. We continue to ignore it and tell it to leave our house. As well, we cleanse any dark entities that may be here. We're hopeful that it will eventually work. We will definitely keep you updated on any scary experiences that we may go through. Hi, my name is Jenny and I am from Arizona. You see, I've always had the gift of feeling and seeing spirits, but my mom wasn't one to believe in such things. The most vivid memory I have of paranormal activity was when I was in fourth grade. Our house was a two-story home and on this particular day, I was home alone with my grandma, my dad's mom, and my younger brother. I don't recall exactly what I was doing, but I remember going downstairs. The hallway upstairs always gave me the creeps, especially because there was a closet door right at the end. As I turned on the light and stared down the hallway, the closet doors slowly swung open. I can't quite remember what I saw, but I screamed, cried, and ran downstairs to find my grandma. Now, here's a quick backstory. My aunt, my dad's sister, can see spirits and both my grandma and dad are strong believers in the paranormal. And well, after that experience, my mom had a woman come to our house to cleanse it. She made my parents throw away items that she deemed evil, including some of my toys. Now, I don't remember this, but my dad does mention that this woman had me say something about me not wanting to see anything anymore. But from there, I never saw anything again. There was stuff that still happened, like me feeling something or someone would be near me and hearing footsteps and small mumbles here and there. We frequently called my aunt for help in cleansing the house. She would FaceTime us and we'd pray together. Afterward, she would tell my grandma how the spirits would bother her, keeping her from sleeping until she prayed them away. There was a period when I was terrified of my own room, but felt unable to leave. It was as though I found comfort in its presence, despite the fear it evoked. My room felt different from the rest of the house, with the strange smell that only others could detect. One day, I felt drawn to visit a yerberia, a store specializing in herbs. There, I learned about cocos, which were said to trap evil energy. That same day, my dad attempted to cleanse my room. My mom cleaned my room while my dad performed the cleansing ritual alone. Afterwards, the energy in my room shifted and the smell went away. We placed white roses and a burning candle with cocos around the room. In the following days, the roses thrived far longer than expected, maintaining their freshness for weeks. This gave me hope that the cleansing had worked. However, as time passed, I began feeling drained and tired once more and my room returned to its messy state. Eventually, we moved to a smaller house in a quieter area where I thought I finally found peace. But as the months go by, the feeling is creeping up on me more and more.
So that was it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to everyone that wrote in their spooky stories. Your guys' stories are the best. They make me lose sleep at night, but I mean, what can I say? I asked for it, right? <laughs> but thank you guys so much for sending in your guys' stories. If you have a spooky story that you'd like to share, send it in at daisyspooks at gmail.com. I'll leave the information in the description box. So go check that out. But thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys all in my next one. Bye!